you create things right in the web browser, you don't have to download it to your local machine anymore. Yes. So that's one big difference. Also, since everything is online, it changes the experience. In addition to authoring online, you can look at someone else's project, immediately see the scripts they use to create their project, experiment with their scripts, remix their scripts. With the new backpack mechanism, you can even grab some of their scripts or their sprites, their images, and take them over into your project. So it adds a whole new layer of collaboration, an easy way to see how other people worked on their projects and to share parts of projects with one another. Mitch, you sound excited about this. Yeah, well, we, it's clear it's the, it's the next real generation of Scratch. It's by far the biggest change since we launched Scratch six years ago. And we really think will enhance both creativity and collaboration in the community. There's also a whole range of new features. For example, you can now use the webcam to create projects that allow people to interact with Scratch projects with their body in the same so spirit as Microsoft Connect. We know lots of young people grow up today right, interacting one. with projects with their body and playing games by moving one. their body using technologies like Microsoft Connect. But with those technologies, kids are only playing with the software. They don't get to create their own games that use those uh, new, uh, new interactive technologies. So with Scratch 2.0, kids can now use the webcam as a sensor so they can so create projects that work, detect motions say? in the world, creating a whole new small? range of you know, games and interactive uh, projects. Oh, that's how it works. so um, so it now has the ability to use the camera. Are there any other yeah. things that um, may not jump at yeah. you right away? Yeah. Well, right, we have a new feature uh, that's called the cloud so it looks like data. A... Okay. So that you can actually store information in the cloud. So that means that if I make a game in Scratch, in addition to keeping track of the score in the game, I could keep track of the high scores list of all time because I could keep what, what is called persistent data. You could store the data and keep it online so for any time anyone plays the Scratch project, it will continue to accumulate that data in a persistent way. So I could do things also like create surveys. So I could create and keep track of all the data over every time anyone ever uses the project. In the old version of Scratch, you could just have something that someone could use that one time, but it had no memory over time. Now you can create a project that keeps track of data over time. Does this kind of um, mean synchronous versus asynchronous um, or real-time ki kinds of stuff that we can do? Actually, most of it is still asynchronous, so uh -huh. people That's building right. up things over time. Uh, you can use this data for some simple type of synchronous things because two people using the same project at the same time could share things through the data in those projects. So you could create like simple turn-taking games that two people are playing at the same time. Okay, big question. Um, I want to run this on my iPad. So for right now, you can't run it on your iPad. Uh, there are a couple challenges. First of all, when we originally did a Scratch player, on the iPhone and iPad, Apple didn't allow it because they don't allow programs to download executable code. Yes, we think that's a very right. unfortunate policy that, that Apple has. Eventually, we're going to work on ways to get around that, and we'll have you know a web app that you'll be able to run on your iPad. Also, another reason it won't run on your iPad right now, even right now, is Flash, because we wanted, there's certain features we have, like the new use of the webcam, that weren't possible uh, with you know other web technologies right now, like JavaScript and HTML5. So for right now, it won't run on the iPad. But in the next year, we'll be working on tablet versions uh, that will work on the iPad. That's cool. So that's something that that's work? to come. We're working on it, and it'll be available you know before too long. It'll work on some types of tablets, but not others. But to be honest, it hasn't been optimized for that. That's really the next stage that we'll be working on in the coming months to make it work on tablets under mobile technologies is sort of a next step ahead. But to be perfectly honest, um, we want to improve that experience. We haven't focused on the tablet experience. That isn't where we're turning our sights now. One thing that really guided us in some of our decisions, there's now more than 3 million projects that have been shared in the Scratch Online community. We want it to be backwards compatible to run all of the existing projects. We didn't want to leave the last 60 years of Scratch you know, behind. But as new web technologies like HTML5 
continue to advance, we'll be able to move over to those new technologies and be able to have a, a, a more widespread experience on all different platforms. All you need really is a, uh, a browser um, and uh, you can start scratching, uh, correct? Yes, yeah, so right now it, it's free, always will be free. Um, and right now it's on the browser. So even if you're at a place that there's some restrictions of what you can install, you can just come in, start using Scratch, looking at Scratch projects online, creating Scratch projects online right away. And also you're doing it as part of a community. Another key part of Scratch is it's not just uh, you know, creativity software, although it's great as that. It's also a social community. It's an online community where people are sharing and learning from one another. That's a key part of the Scratch experience. We always think together between the online community and the programming environment. We've integrated them together from the beginning, and we think that makes the Scratch experience far different than other programming experiences. For us, the key point is not just learning to code, although Scratch is a good way to learn to code, but it's also coding to learn. We see as people code in Scratch, they learn many other things. They aren't just learning programming skills and technical skills, they're also learning important strategies for problem solving, designing pro projects, communicating ideas, collaborating with others. So we see these important learning strategies. They're important for everyone, regardless of what their interests are or what they might be doing in their future nice. lives. All right. Have a good morning.